There are two main types of mirrors, and these are called plane mirrors and curved mirrors. Plane mirrors are flat like this one, whereas curved mirrors are not flat. In GCSE physics, we only need to describe reflection using plane mirrors, in other words, flat ones. In physics, we represent a plane mirror like this, and you could see this in your exams. So let's start off by looking at how light is reflected, but I should point out that all waves follow these rules. Imagine I have a ray of light hitting the mirror like this. We call this the incident ray. I'm going to work out how this ray of light is reflected, so here's how to do it. The first thing we have to do is draw a line at right angles to the mirror. We call this the normal and we use it to work out angles. Remember that we don't actually see the normal. It's just an imaginary line that helps us to draw a ray diagram. First we measure the angle between the incident ray and the normal and we call this the angle of incidence. The incident ray is reflected off the mirror and we call this the reflected ray. We can measure the angle between the reflected ray and the normal and we call this the angle of reflection. Now the key rule is that the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. In other words, these two angles are equal. I know that this can look a bit difficult, but it's not as tricky as it looks, so stick with it and we're going to look at another example. Here's a plane mirror again and here's a ray of light hitting the mirror. Remember that we call this the incident ray. We're going to work out how this is reflected. So first we draw the normal at right angles to the mirror. We then work out the angle of incidence and there it is. And then we draw the reflected ray so that the angle of reflection is the same as the angle of incidence. Remember that the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. By the end of this video you should be able to draw a ray diagram to show the position of an image in a plane mirror. You should then be able to explain that an image in a plane mirror is a virtual image. In the last video we saw that there are two types of mirrors. These are called plane and curved. Remember that a plane mirror is a flat mirror and that's what we see at GCSE. Imagine a ray of light hitting a plane mirror. We said that we call this the incident ray. So let's remind ourselves how this is reflected. First we draw an imaginary line at right angles to the mirror. This is called the normal and we use this to work out angles. The angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence. The ray now reflects off the mirror and we call this the reflected ray. We call the angle between the reflected ray and the normal the angle of reflection. Remember the key fact, the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. So in this video we're looking at how to construct a ray diagram to show the position of an image in a mirror. This is a lot easier than it sounds. Here's our plane mirror again. I've placed an object near the mirror, in this case a yellow circle. This eye shows an observer looking at the image and we're going to work out where the image appears. First of all we draw a normal line. This should be around halfway between the object and the observer. We now draw an incident ray from the top of the object to the mirror so that it hits the normal line and reflects off at the same angle. We then draw another normal line slightly below the first one and then we draw another ray from the object to the mirror, again reflecting off at the same angle. OK, now finally we extend these lines behind the mirror like this. Where the lines meet shows us the position of the reflected image. Now there's one really important point about the image in a plane mirror. Scientists call this image a virtual image. That's because the image is behind the mirror. Some students find the idea of a virtual image a bit tricky. If you do, simply learn this definition. A virtual image cannot be projected onto a screen. That's because although the rays of light seem to come from the reflected image, they do not actually pass through the reflected image. We start with a plane mirror. Plane spelled P-L-A-N-E means flat mirror. You always start by drawing a normal line, and a normal line is 90 degrees to any surface. The ray of light coming in is called the incident ray, and the law of reflection says that the incident ray and the reflected ray always bounces off at the same angle. So the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Mirrors will reflect light according to the law of reflection. That is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. You measure angles to the normal line and a normal line is drawn at 90 degrees to the surface 
of the mirror. You need to be able to construct a diagram to show the location of an image. So here is an object that we're looking at and the image is formed the same distance away inside the mirror. So I've drawn on the image location equidistant and level with the object here. If an observer looks at this object they will see the image inside the mirror. This ray diagram shows you how it forms, how the image forms here. So you start off with your ruler at the position of the image and you draw a ray that goes to the mirror and continues to the eye. That ray would have come from the, Im the object over here and it reflects at the mirror surface. I've repeated that process for a second ray of light and you can see they're diverging, spreading out. If you put your pencil at the object position and join a line up with where the ray hits the mirror, you will get an accurate reflection. These rays reflect off the mirror and go to the eye. These rays aren't real. They're called virtual rays and they should be drawn dotted. So now the diagram's complete. We have an image that's inside the mirror the same distance away that's laterally inverted, that is swapped left to right, and that's virtual. The image can't be formed on the screen and these rays don't really travel. There is no light here. They're virtual. The law of reflection is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and you should use make sure that both angles are the same here uh, and they're measured to the norm which is this dotted line. So the norm is a, a, a perpendicular line to the mirror. So you see that's a right angle there. It's a mirror for my normal and what we do is we measure the angle from the normal to the ray. So the incident ray comes in here, it bounces off and that's a reflected ray and the angle of reflection is equal, it's the same size as the angle of incidence and you should probably use a protractor to make sure of that in the exam. The next bit we're going to look at is that, um, how we form images by a plane mirror. So you can see here you might be asked to do this in the exam. So you can see that if, the, if we take our object here which is RL, we've drawn a line coming here and drawn the reflected line on and extrapolated this back in the mirror to see where it come from. And we do the same with the blue line. Remember the angles should be the same. The angle of incidence should be equal to the angle of reflection. I'll extrapolate this one back and then we can draw our image there. These are construction lines, so that's not really where the light ray comes from, but it's where we see the light ray coming from if we look into the mirror. So we'd imagine that the object would be inside the mirror. You need to be aware that the image produced by a plane mirror is the same size as the object. It's the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. It's upright, so it's the same way vertically, uh, but it's back to front compared to the object, so it's laterally inverted. And it's a virtual image, it doesn't really exist, you can't project it onto a screen, but you can see it inside the mirror. Just to clarify a few things, so real images are formed where the actual light rays cross, where real light rays cross so you can project it onto something. Um, so real images can be um, cast onto a screen, an example of that is a projector image. Whereas virtual images are formed when light rays only appear to come from. So they're not real, it's where we see the light rays coming from when they come off from something like a mirror or through a lens, but it's not actually where the image is. And examples of that include images uh, by a plane mirror. All EM waves can be reflected when they arrive at a boundary between one substance and another. Have a look at this light ray as it's reflected by a mirror. We can draw a normal at the point at which it strikes the mirror. A normal is an imaginary line which is drawn at right angles or perpendicular to a surface. The angle between the normal and the incident ray, that's just the ray that's travelling towards the surface, is called the angle of incidence, I, and the angle between the normal and the reflected ray is called the angle of reflection, R. No matter what type of wave we're dealing with, and whatever the surface, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Let's say this is a mirror, and uh, if we, this is a point of reflection. Let's say we have a light ray, and the light ray hit this point. This is called a point of reflections. And uh, if we draw a line perpendicular, this line, okay, this line perpendicular to the mirror, 90 degree yeah, at right angles, 90 degree, right here, it's 90 degree, 90 degree. 
with the plane, okay? And this line is called the normal, okay? This line is called the normal. And uh, this is a light ray. This light ray, it hit this point, okay? This is called the points of reflection, and then it's reflected, okay? It's reflected. So this is called the incident ray, okay? This is called the incident ray. And uh, the angle between the incident ray and the normal, the incident ray and the normal, is called the angles of incidence. All the angles are uh, always measured from the normal. Okay, all angles must be measured from the normal. Eh? Okay, so if if this is a ray, eh, okay, sometimes uh, some students they may measure these angles. Okay, so they measure this angle and then they think that this is the angles of incidence. That's not true. Okay, all angles must be measured from the normal. Okay, so this is normal and this is incident ray. So the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angles of incident. And uh, of course, the angle uh, between the normal and the reflected ray is called the angles of reflections. Okay, angles of reflections. Uh, and this is normal. Eh? Normal. This is uh, incident ray. Okay, this is reflected ray. Okay, so that's the terms that you need to know. Eh? Normal, incident ray, reflected ray, angles of incidence, and angles of reflections. And always remember, all angles must be measured from normal. So according to the laws of reflections, eh? according to the laws of reflections, the angles of incidence must be equal to the angles of reflections. So that is the laws of Reflections. Okay, there, actually, there are two laws of reflections. Uh, this is the first law. Angles of incidence must be equal to the angles of reflections. Uh, okay, so this is uh, laws of reflections. And above the angles of incidence and the angles of reflection must be measured from the normal, as I told you just now, right? Uh, you must measure it from the normal. The second law of reflections. Okay, now the second laws of uh, reflections says that the incident ray. The reflected ray and the normal, okay, it must be lies on the same plane, means on the same surface, okay. This tree, yeah? okay, this tree, these three lines, the normal, incident rays, and reflected ray, it must be on the same surface, uh, it must lie on the same surface. So that is the second law. Types of images. So there are two types of image, real image and uh, virtual image. It's very important for you to know these two types of image, yeah? okay? So how do we know? How do we know an, Im an image is real image or virtual image? A real image is the image that can form on a screen, okay? For example, so in cinema, this is a projector, okay? This is a projector, and uh, this projector, it projects. It projects the pictures on the screen. This is a screen, right, okay? This is in, in the cinema, okay? This, these are the audience, yeah? And uh, at the back, we have a projectors. These projectors projects the image on the screen, okay? So this image is formed on the screen, okay? This image formed on the screen. And these types of image is called a real image. It's a real image. Yeah? Then how about virtual image? Virtual image is the image that cannot form on the screen. Now, what types of image cannot form on the screen? Uh, mirror, okay? This is, a, this is a mirror, okay? So image image the image is not on the screen okay the image is inside if this is a mirror okay you will find that all the image is inside the mirror okay if you stand uh, one meter from the mirror then you will find that the image is one meter from the mirror okay so the the image is not on the screen eh? the image is inside inside the screen okay it's not on the screen and these types of image is called the virtual image virtual image and these are the the, the, the definitions huh? a real image is the image that can form on the screen and a virtual image is the image that cannot form on the screen okay and you must memorize the the definitions okay because an exam they may ask you okay what does it mean by real image oh, then is then you say that a real image is the image that can form on a screen now a screen can be anything so, okay it can be a wall eh? It can, it can be a wall, okay, and it can be the cinema screen, eh? or can, it can be the whiteboard or blackboard, okay? Not necessarily it must be on a cinema screen, okay? It can be whiteboard, blackboard, or even on a wall, okay? Okay, so that is uh, two types of uh, images. So let's start with plane mirror. Eh? 
So this is a plan mirror. So there are a few things that you need to note about plan mirror. First, the image formed by the plan mirror is what? First, is virtual. Okay, virtual. You see, the image is inside the mirror. It's not on the surface of the mirrors. Okay, it's not on the screen. It's not on the surface of the mirror. It's inside the mirrors, and therefore, it's virtual. Eh? It's virtual, and it's upright. Okay, upright means it's not inverted. The head on top, the head on top, right? Okay, so the hand. Okay, above the head. The hand is also above the head. So it's upright, it's not inverted. Inverted means that uh, here the head on top, but here the, the head at, uh, at the bottom. So, okay, then it's inverted. Okay, but for plain mirrors, the image is upright. It's upright. And uh, same size as the object. You will find that, okay, the size of all, size of all the objects inside here is, uh, is the same size of all the objects outside. Uh, here it, it looks smaller, right? Okay, this one is big. This one is small. That is because uh, it's uh, it's far away. Okay, not it's because this one actually uh, it's not because the image is smaller, but it's because it's far away. So that's why it looks smaller. But actually, the size is the same. Eh? Okay, so that is the characteristics of the image that you need to know. Okay, and then uh, it's literally inverted. Literally inverted means that the left become right and the right become left. Okay, for example, if uh, if uh, for this lady, let's say the right hand, okay, the right hand or the left hand, okay, let's say the left hand, okay. So if the left hand of the lady has a band, has a blue band, so let's say we have a blue band here, okay. So this is the left hand of the lady, has a blue band here, okay. But then so you will find that, okay, inside the image okay the right hand will have a band okay so this is the left hand okay this is the left hand eh? but inside the image this is the right hand right so inside the mirrors of the, the image the left become right the, the right become left okay and we call this literally inverted so the image is uh, same size upright let but is a uh, literally inverted and it's virtual. Virtual means that it's not formed on the screen. Okay, not formed on the screen. And also you will find that the distance of the object, this is the object, okay? This is the object, the distance of the object from the mirror. Okay, this is the place uh, of the mirrors, okay? So distance of the object from the mirrors is the same as the distance of the image from the mirror. If this lady is three meter from the mirror, then you will find that this image is also three meter from the mirror. So the distance between the image and mirror is equal to the distance between the object and mirror. That's what you need to know uh, about plane mirror. Drawing ray diagram of a plane mirror. Okay. Now in the exam, uh, they may give you something like this. Okay, they tell you that okay, this is the object and then this is the observer, the eye of the observer, and this is a mirror, okay? And they would like you to draw the ray diagram of the formations of image by the plane mirror okay so they would like you to draw this so how to draw this huh? how to draw this okay there are the steps huh? there are a the few steps that you need to follow okay first okay first huh? uh, or step one okay you can see that so okay step one is draw the virtual image huh? draw the virtual image now, how to draw the virtual image Okay, we know that the distance of the object from the mirror is equal to the distance of the image from the mirror. Okay, so you just measure, okay, let's say you measure this point, okay, you measure this point, uh, you measure this point, okay, you'll, uh, then you find that this is, uh, let's say, 10 cm, okay, 10 cm. So then you use your ruler, okay, yeah, you use your ruler. You need to have a reference line actually, yeah? okay? So because uh, it's perpendicular, so you, you use a reference line here, okay? So you draw a reference line which is a perpendicular to the plane, okay? And then you measure 10 cm, okay? So, so, so your 10 cm is here, okay? So then you get your first point, okay? Uh, then you, you try to draw the second point, okay? So this second point and you measure 10 cm again and then uh, here you plot 10 cm, okay? After you have this two point, then you can start drawing your image start drawing your image huh? so you see the first step is to draw the image first by using the rules uh, the distance of the image from the mirror equal to the distance of the object from the mirror if this is 10 cm this is also 10 cm okay here to here 10 cm here to here also 10 cm so distance of object equal to 
distance of image. Yeah? Okay, so that's the first thing that you need to draw. Okay, so after that, yeah, okay, after that, uh, uh, on this image, you choose a point. Okay, you choose a point. That point is for you to draw this uh, ray diagram. Okay, to draw all this line. The point can be anywhere. Okay. It can be here, okay, you can choose this point, you can choose this point, you can choose this point, you can choose at the back here or in front here, it's up to you actually. Uh, in this case, I choose the middles of the uh, ball, okay, the center of the circle, the centers of the circle, I choose this point as a reference point, okay. The image forms at a point where the two lines intersect. So if this is a point that you choose, uh, then you need to draw all the lines, uh, these two lines, you can draw more than two lines, but usually just draw two lines, okay. So this two lines, uh, it will uh, focus or intersect at this point. So draw two reflected rays, one from the top of the images to the top of the eye and the other one from the top of the images to the bottoms of the eye. Okay. Now in this case, uh, it says it's from the top of the images. Uh, okay. Top means here, okay. but in this case, I use the center. You can use the top or the bottoms of the center. It's up to you. Okay. So one is from the point that you choose uh, to the top of the eye. Another one is to the bottoms of the eye. So after that, draw the respective incident rays for the reflect uh, and the, uh, for the reflected rays you draw in step two. Okay. Uh, after that, okay. So you see this one, eh? Uh, we draw two lines uh, from this point to the eye. Okay. These solid lines represent the ray. Okay. And uh, behind the mirror, this is in front of the mirror. Behind the mirror, this line. Okay. This is just a reference line because there's no right. Sorry, there's no light reach this area the lights come here and then reflect it there's no light here so this two line is just a reference line eh? and we use a dotted line for the reference line so even though i say draw two two straight line okay but from the mirrors to the image eh, we use a dotted line and from the mirrors to the eye we use a solid line eh? so after you have this two light ray okay then uh then we draw the incident ray yeah? okay we know that the ray is come from the center because the image is at the center okay so the, the source must be from the centers of the object so we draw two light ray yeah? from the mirrors to the points of the reference okay and uh, then we label the directions of the ray yeah? directions of the ray is from the objects to the eye uh, then then we complete so we complete uh, the ray diagram okay and for the ray diagram uh, you will find that the angles of incident angle equal to the angles of reflections but uh you, you don't need to measure okay yeah because we don't use this rule to draw the ray diagram okay so you don't need to measure uh, 30 degree 30 degree and then you draw okay so you don't need to measure the angles to draw the ray diagram eh? okay we draw the image first and the image the distance of the image from the mirror is equal to the distance of the object from the mirror so that is the steps in drawing ray diagram. So let's try to do this. Eh? The very first thing is draw the virtual image. So we measure. So if you have your ruler with you, you can try to measure the distance of the object. Let's take a top, okay? This point, yeah? Uh, measure the distance of the top of the object, uh, the distance of the object from the mirror, okay? You can draw a reference line first. Uh, this line is perpendicular to the mirror. Eh? Okay. Use pencil to draw this line and later on you can erase it. Eh? So this is 90 degree and then uh, measure the distance from the mirrors to the object. So after you measure, then we know that this is the top of the object. So then we uh, draw the circle here. Okay. So make sure that the distance of the object to the mirror and the mirrors to the image is the same. Eh? Okay. So the reference line, we can erase the reference line, okay. So now we have our object here. So we complete first step. And then uh, second, choose one point, one point of the image as a reference. Okay, let's say uh, we take the top, okay, we take here, the top as a reference. So second step, draw two reflected ray, one from the top of the image to the top of the eye, and another one from the top of the image to the bottoms of the eye. So it's from the top of the image to the Eye, yeah? So this is the top of the eye and this is the bottoms of the eye, let's say. So, uh, oh, okay. So here I do not choose the top. Uh, I choose this point. Okay. I choose the point in front. Uh, this point, this point here is, is, is the reflected point yeah? of this point. Yeah? So we draw two straight lines, okay, from this point to the top of the eye and this point to the bottoms of the eye. 
And uh, this this two line should be dotted line. Yeah? This two line should be dotted line. So let's uh, let's erase it. So erase it to make it dotted line. Oh, I'm a dot. Okay, this one also. Okay, now after you have this two line, okay, the the ones uh, at the back is a dotted line. The one the one in front uh, is a solid line. Okay, we need to draw the ref uh, the incident ray. Okay, we need to draw the incident ray. You need to know that this one, uh, okay, the the point is here, okay. So the respective, the the corresponding uh, point is here, okay. So draw the respective incident rays for the uh, reflected rays you draw in step two, okay. So this is the first one. So from this point we draw to the this ray, and from this point also we draw to this ray, okay. Okay, then uh, we complete this ray diagram. Okay, that's how we draw the ray diagram for plane mirror. So we draw the image first and then choose the points. Okay, choose the points on the image. Okay, and then uh, it can be a top, bottom, center, front, back. It's up to you. Okay, it's totally up to you. You can choose top or bottoms or whatever. Okay, and then draw two, two light ray yeah? from these points to the top of the eye and from this point to the bottoms of the eye. Okay, and then so make sure that you, you use a dotted line okay for the lines behind the mirror and then draw two lines from the object the, the point must be from the corresponding points of the image yeah? because if you choose this point here then you must use this okay? you cannot you choose this point here and then for here you choose the but the bottoms again okay? you choose this point uh, then it's not correct okay so that is the drawing ray diagram of a plain mirror let's see question one a man stands 10 meters in front of a large plain mirror. How far must he walk before he is 5 meters away from his image? Now this 5 meters is from him to his image. Huh? Answer. So the answer is 7.5 meters. Let's see why. Huh? Let's see why. Okay, let's say this is a floor. Okay, This is a mirror. Okay. Initially the man is uh, 10 meters. So this is the man. This is the man. Okay. Let's see, where is the image? If this is the man, where is his image? So, the man is 10 meter in front of a large plane. So, from him, okay, it's 10 meter. And then the image is also 10 meter, right? So in this case, the man is how many meter from the image? 20, yes, that's correct, okay? So the man is 20 meter from his image. Now the question say how far must he walk before he is five meter from his image? Five meter from his image uh, means that he must move forward, right? But when he move forward, the image also move forward. Now the question says that okay, so the distance from the man from his image must be five meter, five meter from his image. So the image is here and the man is here, five meter. So let's move it five meters. Okay, so let's say he's here. And the image also move forwards. And the image is here. Okay. So now they are five meters from each other, the image and the object. Now five meter means that uh the man is uh 2.5 meter, 2.5 meter from the mirror, and the image is also 2.5 meter from the mirror, right? Okay. So then how far he has walked from here to here, how far he has walked? Initially he's here. Okay, now he move forward so that he's five meter from the image. Five meter from the image means two point five meter from the mirror, right? Yes, he has walk. He has walk seven point five meter. So the answer is seven point five meter. Okay, ten minus two point five. That's correct. That's how the questions look like for uh, SBM. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, okay? They, they, they don't want you to find the distance of the mirror and the object. They want you to find the uh, the distance of, of the object from the image or how far he has moved so that the distance is 5 meters, okay? Something like this. Applications of plane mirror. The first one is anti parallax mirror, okay? Now, uh, in the ammeter, wood meters, galvanometers, okay? Sometimes uh, you can see that there is a mirror here, okay? This is a scale, it's a scale, and there's a mirror here. So the mirror under the pointers of a meter is called the anti-parallax mirror. So this one is called the anti-parallax mirror, okay? 
The functions of this mural is to prevent parallax error when taking the readings. If your eye is on top of the this pointer, if your eye is on top of the pointer, so then you will find that the pointer will cover the image. Then you can't see the image. If you don't see the image, then there's no parallax error. Okay, so what you read is accurate. There's no parallax error. Okay, but if your eye is not at right angles on top of the pointer, then you will see, like in this case, okay, in this case, uh, when you see, it's, hey, the reading is uh, uh, this six, okay, six, six point two, six point four, six point six, okay, this is six point six ampere, but then you see, there is a uh, this image of the pointer here, okay, so this six point six is not accurate. There is parallax error, okay, so you must move your eye so that your eye is on top of this pointer, the pointer block the image, uh, cover the image, block the image, and then there's no parallax error. Okay, so this is the applications of plane mirrors to prevent parallax error. And this mirror is called anti-parallax mirror. Ambulance, eh? ambulance, okay. From the front of the ambulance, okay, normally you can see the, you can see the words ambulance, but then so you will find that this, this word ambulance is literally inverted. It's literally inverted. Uh, you see, this one, the A is on the left hand side. Now the A becomes the right hand side. Okay, The E is on the right hand side, but then now the E becomes on the left hand side. So why? Okay, Why is, uh, is place literally inverted? Because, because when you are driving, okay, and you see from the real view mirrors, Okay, then your real mirror will uh, show the laterally inverted image. Okay, so when the mirrors okay reflected this image, huh? okay, this image will be laterally inverted. Then the left become the right, and the right become the left. Ah, then you can see, then you can see this ambulance, these words properly. So that is for the drivers, huh? the drivers to see the words properly so that so that they know this is ambulance car yeah, either it's a police car or ambulance or what okay uh in this case uh, we apply our knowledge knowledge of uh, reflections uh, the characteristics of the image formed by the reflections of plane mirrors uh, on the uh, ambulance this is not plane mirror this is periscope uh, okay this is so usually periscope is, is used in submarine uh, uh, so it's used in submarines to view objects above the surface of the sea. Yeah? This is a periscope. There are two mirrors, uh, two plane mirrors used so that it's the light hit the mirror. This is 45 degree. Yeah? Okay. So the mirror is, is placed 45 degrees so that after the reflection, this light go down at right angles, a 90 degree. Uh, and then so we go to the eye. Now, take note stats, okay? This one, okay, this one is like A yeah, on top. And I go down here, it go down here, it's still on top. This is like B, it go here, and go here, then it's still B, okay. So it means that uh, the image form is upright, yeah? okay. A, ab A above B, A above B. So the image form is uh, upright. So this is also another application of plane mirror. Uh, optical testing, yeah? okay, if the room is too small, and we don't have enough distance uh, for the optical testing, then we can use a mirror. Okay, we can use a mirror and we put the eye chart at the back and you put a mirror here. Then you will find that the distance, uh, the distance of the eye chart from the observer can be increased. For example, so from here, from the eye chart to the mirror is 10 meter. And uh, the observer is standing let's say uh, 17, uh, 7 meter, this is observer, okay? 3 meter from the eye chart, uh, 7 meter, 7 meter from the mirror. Uh, in this case, uh, in this case, so what's the distance of the observer from the image of the eye chart? If the observer is 7 meter from the mirror, the eye chart is 10 meter from the mirror. What is the distance of the observer from the image of the eye chart? So when this observer, he see the eye chart, the eye chart is how many meter from him? Eh? The image of the eye chart is not this, okay? It's not the, it's not the eye chart. Eye chart is three meter, okay? The image of the eye chart is, yes, 17 meter. That's right, okay? Because he's seven meter from the 
mirror okay and the eye chart is 10 meter okay so there's another 10 meter okay 10 meter the eye chart the image of the eye chart is 10 meter from the mirror so totally 7 plus 10 17 meter so you can see now he is 17 meter from the eye chart but the room is just 10 meter long eh? the room is just 10 meter long but because by applying by by using image eh? so the distance of the eye chart is 17 meter from the observer okay so that is uh applications of plane mirror in optical testing okay if the room is too small eh? okay then you can use a mirror eh? you can use the mirrors to increase the distance of the eye chart from the observer side or real view mirrors of a car i think this one you know right okay so uh, side mirrors we use plane plane mirrors and the real view mirrors we use plane mirror okay uh, but in exam they may ask you what what are the advantages of using plane mirror what are the advantages of using plane mirror first because plane mirrors the distance of the object is a, is equal to the distance of the image yeah? so then the driver can estimate the distance of the object correctly okay so when you see the the mirrors okay then you can then you can uh, estimate uh, okay the car is how far from you okay because the distance of object same as the distance of image yeah? okay uh, but if you use convex or concave mirrors then you can't estimate uh, because concave conca concave mirrors uh, the distance is not the same so it's very hard for you to estimate uh, where is the car uh, but for if you use plane mirror then you can uh, easily estimate the distance of the object from you and seconds uh, because for uh, plane mirrors the image is upright okay so what you see from the car here is uh, is upright it's not inverted okay if you use a concave mirror you may get inverted uh, image okay so that's why we don't use uh, concave mirrors uh, as a this is a side view mirror sometimes uh, we have a con convex mirror we put a small convex mirror here small convex mirror here but uh, we do not put concave mirror eh? okay so that is a uh, side or real view mirrors of a car this is side view mirror this is real this one is real view mirror okay so this is summary anti parax error ambulance periscope visions testings okay mirrors this shows you two examples of refraction. Both of these show glasses of water and we can see light changing direction as it passes through. So let's look at what's meant by refraction. The key idea to understand is that light changes direction when it changes speed and scientists call this change in direction refraction. The best way to understand this is to look at a ray diagram. I've got here an object on one side of a glass block. A ray of light passes from the object and it hits the side of the block at an angle. Scientists call this the incident ray. I'm going to draw a normal line where the ray hits the block. Remember that the normal is just an imaginary line at right angles to the surface of the block. When the light passes into the glass, the speed of the light decreases. In other words, the light slows down. When light slows, the direction of the light bends towards the normal and we can see this with the ray. So the light now passes through the glass until it leaves on the other side of the block. I'm going to draw a normal line at the point where the light ray leaves the block. Light speeds up when it leaves the glass and now the ray bends away from the normal. So the question is how would the object appear if you viewed it through the glass block? Well I've got here an observer and the ray of light is passing into the observer's eye. We can work out where the object appears by drawing the line straight back like this. So you can see that the object appears in a different position and that's due to refraction. Now there's one final point about refraction which you need to understand. If the ray of light enters the block along the normal then it does not change direction. Refraction is where light changes direction. And the reason it changes direction is it will slow down or speed up. So in the case of a glass block, if light goes through air into glass, it will actually slow down. And this slowing down makes the light bend towards the normal. As it emerges from the glass into the air, it will bend away from the normal. And this is called refraction. Have a look at this picture. Notice anything strange? Yep, it looks as though my lovely spoon is broken. But don't worry, no spoons were harmed in the making of this video. This optical illusion is caused by a process called refraction. Refraction is the change in direction of a wave as it travels from one medium into another. 
It happens when a wave changes speed upon travelling from the first medium into the second. Here, this light ray refracts towards the normal as it travels from air into glass. As before, the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. The angle of refraction is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. Be careful here because, as confusing as it is, the letter R is often used to represent both the angle of reflection and the angle of refraction. In this diagram, a ray of light is travelling from air into a glass block, then out the other side. Where the ray is travelling from air into glass, it refracts towards the normal because light travels more slowly in glass than in air. When the light travels from glass back into air, it refracts away from the normal because light travels more quickly in air than in glass. In general, when a wave of any type slows down upon travelling from one medium into another, it refracts towards the normal, and when it speeds up, it refracts away from the normal. The only time a wave won't refract on moving from one material into another and changing in speed is when it's incident onto the surface at right angles like this. This is often called normal incidence, where the angle of incidence is zero degrees. Refractions of light means the change of directions of the light ray. So that is refractions. Eh? So why? Why this light uh, change the directions of the propagations? Why? Light rays are bent when they pass an angle in or out of materials such as gas, uh, sorry, such as glass and water. And this effect is called the uh, refractions. So refraction is the change of the angle or bend of the light ray eh, when it moves in or out of a material, uh, a transparent material. Okay, so that is uh, refractions. For example, sir, uh, there's a light ray. Okay, the light ray heading towards uh, another medium. This light ray is called the incident ray. We have learned this uh, in reflections of light. Eh? Okay, this is incident ray. When this ray it reach uh, the second medium, okay, you see the directions change. Eh? Okay, suppose it move in a straight line. Okay, but the direction change. Now it moves uh, a, a little bit lower. So this is called the refracted ray. Yeah? This is the incident ray and this is a refracted ray. Uh, if we draw a line, a straight line perpendicular to this plane at the points of refraction, eh? okay, we draw a straight line. And this line is called a normer. It's called a normer. And you need to know how to draw the normer. Eh? Okay, because in the exam they may ask you to draw the ray diagram. So you must learn how to draw the normer. Okay, and the angle be between the incident ray and the normal is called the angles of incidence. So this I is the angles of incidence. And the angle between the refracted ray and the normal is called the angles of refractions. And it's denoted by the symbol R. That's what you need to know about the fundamentals of refractions, the definitions of refractions, and some important terms uh, in the ray diagram.